Hi folks, so uh, 2016 short questions here. Um, so I've gone ahead and I have numbered out part of this development which we've been asked to do. So we have this kind of cover for our traffic uh, lights, okay? And with elevation here and an end view, okay? Now, P will come back to about later on, but the first part there is asking us to do the surface development. Now, the top half of this, they've been divided up with their standard 6030. Just down here in the bottom, they seem to divide up that 6030 with another 15 degrees. Okay, so if you get your compass there, like I did, set it that, get that distance there and just mark it off between them. You could do it without it, but they just seem to have added in those few extra points, so we'll make use of them. Okay, so um, point eight is going to be out here, seven is there, and we'll continue on then with this and we'll do the development out there. So getting six points. 6 and 10, okay. We need to extend out all of these to find where they cross. So actually, I'll just run out these lines. Now, second thing, a point P on the surface of the cylinder is shown in the elevation here. Locate this point in the end view and on the surface development, okay? So, it doesn't say which is it on the front or back. I'm going to assume it's on the near side here, okay? So, what we've got to do is locate it in the end view. So, that gave me P over there. Now, depending on which way you rolled out the development, then we'll set down our compass there on 6. Measure it out, step it out to P. And the same thing over here, put it down on six. So it's between six and seven. So I'll bring it out there. And drop it down. Now if you number this the opposite way around, your P could possibly be down here. Now, so question uh, A2, we've been given this uh, bar graph presentation, okay, a flip chart, and we've got to finish this guy out here, okay? So, I'll bring up all our key points here, first of all. Now, um, we can see the heights of these things. Now, you could bring them over to this line and bring them up and bounce them across if you want to, to do that as well. But this, the height of this one here goes up as far as that there where it hits the green line. And we'll bring this guy across. Throw down our set squares there. Next one then, the middle one goes up as far as this guy, bring him across, a 
last one there. We'll just run this up lightly first of all. So he's going to go up there actually till he hits that green line. Bring it across. And then we can finish out this here. That's part A of that done. Part B is asking us to determine the true inclination of the diagonal AB to the horizontal plane. Okay, so we have this line here. So the most simple way about doing this, draw a line across like so, get your compass, set it to the distance BA, and we're just going to revolve that. So we'll be looking at it at 90 degrees. Bring it up. A now is on the ground, actually it's no height, so we'll just call that A1. Okay, it will be there. And then if you join in A1 onto B, that will be the true length of that diagonal. Okay. And you're, you can also see not only is the true length, but it has the true, true inclination there. Okay, so that angle is its true inclin inclination to the horizontal plane when it's revolved around like that. Hi folks, so question A3 here, and we've been asked to draw a hyperbola, okay, basically. Now, it's telling us there the hyperbola has an eccentricity of 3 is to 2. Now, an important thing to note about the hyperbola is the eccentricity line has, it must be steeper than 45 degrees. A parabola is 45 degrees exactly, an ellipse is less than 45 degrees. So that there, if I come out, I'm coming out, uh, we'll say two centimeters going up three for, let's call them two units, three units. Okay, and that is going to give me a point on the eccentricity line. Now that line, you can clearly see there, is steeper than 45 degrees. And I know that's right. If you did it the other way, you would have a line that's less than 45 degrees, okay? And that'd be wrong. So when you have the eccentricity line in there, the next thing we're gonna do there is we're gonna bring a line up from F. In fact, we can extend it on well up there, the last rectum. Now, we're gonna need that in a moment. The next thing we're gonna to want to do is to find the vertex. So from the focal point, come out 45 degrees, drop down, that'll get to the vertex there. After that, we're going to take a, a series of random ordinates up to hit the eccentricity line. And I think three will be enough for us. With the hit, come across there. Now what we need to do after that is we need to get our compass. And all our swinging is going to be done from F now. So at the moment, we have two points on that. And we only have to draw one branch, it's telling us there in the question, okay? So put down your uh, compass at F. And from there, swing out an arc, okay? To hit the first ordinate. Extend it onward then to the second one. And we're going to swing out another arc to hit the second ordinate. And we're going to go up to the top guy in the top now. And we're going to swing out from there. And each of those will give us a point on the hyperbola. And we can draw in our freehand curve then after that. Okay, so that'll do point, uh, part A. Part B then, locate a point P on the curve, which is 60 mil from the focus. And construct a tangent to the curve at point P. So we must find point P first, so set your compass there to 60 mil. Put it on F, swing an arc. That'll get me point P up there. Now the handiest way, and it works for all, all the conics, to draw a tangent, is to join, join it down to the focal point, come off, perpendicular to that then, okay. And where across the directrix there will give you a point on the tangent. So now we have two points. So we can just go ahead now and draw in our tangent there. Okay. And that's question 
A3 done. Now, question A4 there, the image below shows the atom -ium structure in Brussels, which is based on an inclined cube. The drawing on the right shows the incomplete projections of a similar inclined cube. Complete the elevation of the cube. Okay, so uh, first thing I always like to do with these is label them up. Great believer in it, it makes life so easy. So if we label it up there, uh, the auxiliary and the plan view, and what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take heights, okay, and transfer them two views over. So uh, the measurements are always the same. So I'll just put in a line here so we can mark off the heights for 0.6 and 7, 4 be on the same. These are on the same. So we can take all our heights off there now, okay. And we'll just extend the line upwards here. We'll just get our compass and we'll mark, uh, the first one is actually marked off for the already in elevation. Maybe the second height we'll need and the third height. And we can just run them across there. Now we'll bring up all our heights and so I'll just put in one more line going across there actually. Now we already have 0.7 here. 0.5 is on the second height, so we can bring him straight up here. Three, if I look there, it's on the second height as well. Eight is going to be on the ground. One is going to be right up at the top. Then we get six here, six is here. Four is also on that first height there, you can see. And the last one now is we need is two and that's on the second height up here. So the great thing about labeling is they have to go back together. So one is going to three and two. And we'll just put them in all lightly for, uh, for a moment first. Two is going to four, four is going to three. And then similarly, we just join these guys up. And the great thing about labeling is it's very hard to go wrong because if you look even here, five has to go to join to one, seven has to go to three. Now we're looking in this way, okay? So this means that the line three, four, we're not going to see that, that's going to be in hidden detail. as is one is uh, three up to one there. And the rest then we'll see. And that is what our elevation should look like. Okay, so that's part A. Part B then is asking us, draw the plan of the elevation of the smallest possible sphere that would contain the cube. So um, in fifth year, you, you would have done something like this. Uh, so you would. So we would have joined the two most further diagonals away from each other, okay? That would be the longest possible length. And if we half those, which is actually, you could bisect it, but it's actually right there. You could then go and step that off our compass there and we'll just join in uh, one is to eight up here I'm just coming up halfway there and that is our cube going in there now we'll just Give me another compass slip there. And we'll come down to plan view, draw it in there as well. So that's that question finished, folks. 
Uh, so I hope you found that useful, folks. Stay safe. Uh, more videos to come. Take care.